Hello and welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, checking up on all my notes and such. Um, we have to return here and we can get Creighton's uh, stuff. And we didn't read all the things that we got from the last uh, episode, so we're going to do that. Um, I guess there were just two rings. We can read those first. Um, so we have the magic clutch. Ring depicting a hand grasping a blue stone increases, ma increases magic attack but compromises damage absorption. The old fable in Londor claims that the lure of the clutch ring reaches out to the crestfallen who might otherwise be overcome by despair. So yeah, maybe this is a reference to Manus. I don't know. Um, and then we had the firstborn. Ring of the Sun's Firstborn, who inherited the light of Gwyn, the First Lord. The Sun's Firstborn was once a god of war, until he was stripped of his stature as punishment for his foolishness. No wonder his very name has slipped from the annals of history. Formal attire of the Honorable Knights of Mira. Oddly, it was a dishonorable deserter who wore this attire most religiously. Tire of Creighton the Wanderer, a notorious deserter that fled in order of Mira Knights. Despite the mask being a symbol of a criminal sentenced to death, Creighton never removed it. Featuring their heraldry, a stag set against a, a blue field. Yeah, we saw that with that shield as well. Alright. I'm going to drop these off and then we're going to go attempt... Uh, uh, Pontiff Sullivan. Oops. Okay. Oops. Um, so, I think, yeah, Church of Yorshka. Just, I didn't mention that earlier. Um, so, um, I think what we're going to do is I want to summon Henri because I just want her to, uh, like I, I like her storyline. Oh, interesting. You can still kill this guy. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to summon Blackhand Goddard. Or however you pronounce that. Um, Um, Black Hand Goddard gives you an item, or uh, a gesture, you know, and I might as well get all the gestures. Might as well take these guys out. Alright, so we're not going to do that because we're on the good side of, yeah, I'm going to do this guy and we're going to do Henri. see Lothric from here. So he comes in, then he does buy my sword, and that makes you get it. And then we'll just do Henri. This is a pretty hard fight in general. Um, I got pretty good at this fight because I used to summon my, you know, place a white soapstone and just get summoned all the time. Um... But, you know, I haven't played him for a long time, so. But he's cool.
This part of the battle actually makes it easier. Because although there's two of them now, they do the same things. And their moveset is much similar. It's similar. I don't even mean to say it's similar. <laughs> it's simplified. Even though there's two of them. You should be dead. There you go, Henri. I just took a look at his health at the end there when I was just kind of like expecting the fight to go for a little bit longer and I was just like, oh, it's pretty much no health. Soul of Pontus Sullivan. One of the twisted souls steeped in strength. Pontiff Sullivan of Irithil imprisoned a god of the old royalty in the abandoned cathedral to be fed to the devourer. Oh man, so Pontiff Sullivan kind of looks like he ran Irithil and he imprisoned a god of the old royalty. Um, I mean, who could we imagine that being right now? I kind of know the answer, but I mean, let's just take that for what it says. It's a god, and it's of the old royalty. So that probably indicates that it's in Gwyn's family. So is it going to be Gwyn? Um, no. Is it going to be the firstborn? Possibly. Is it going to be Guinevere? Uh... I mean, maybe if we were to just assume we've missed a whole part of the story, but I'll just say no, because we know that she's the Queen of Lothric. And although that could be like, oh, well, then maybe she's is related to the story, but she, in, incidentally, she isn't. It could be um, Gwendolyn. Um, and so likely it's, it's uh, Gwendolyn that just based on the stories of the rest of them and what we know of them so um he took Gwendolyn I mean it was Gwendolyn so I'll just say it's Gwendolyn from now on <laughs> Pontiff Sullivan imprisoned Gwendolyn uh in the abandoned cathedral probably the cathedral in Anorlando and fed and fed Gwendolyn to the devourer well, I mean, we could, that could be, um, Smo, or that could be Aldrich. I'm betting Aldrich just because Gwyn, or, uh, Smo ground his bone, bones of his victims into his food. That's all. He didn't really devour anyone. So, Sullivan working for... I don't know. It seems like Sullivan has a strong arm over all of like this area because not just Irithil, because his Outrider Knights are constantly around. Um and he uh he seems to be moving a lot of pieces. He also brought Aldrich from the Cathedral of the Deep and put him in the cathedral here so that he could start feeding gods to Aldrich 
to see what I, my my guess would be to see what sort of power they could get by absorbing all these gods. How he got his hands on Gwendolyn, I have no idea. But it certainly is starting to sound like we are close to An Orlando. Um, if not in An Orlando. I mean, you know, the architecture looks surprisingly similar. And um, it kind of looks like it's frozen, like Elliot Lois, which I think is An Orlando as well. And. Um, There's lots of references to, you know, Ornstein and and Smo and the Silver Knights and I mean even Vendrick and I mean I guess the Chandra. Ugh. Dark stone plate. Yep. Granted done knights. So now that we know that Aldridge is here, it's gonna be no surprise to any of us that we find some deacons here. These are like some of the higher level ones. These guys die. There you go. <laughs> Save myself from yet another invasion. Um, that's probably gonna be like I might want to go offline here. How far are we into the video? Just because this place is just so rife with PvP that, you know. It's gonna maybe prevent us from getting anything done. There's that same statue, but with a crown on. I didn't see a crown the last time. But the baby is gone. I guess let's just leave my souls for now and we'll just grab the shortcut so that we get it There's a couple of items up here as well. <laughs> a crystal lizard, apparently. Simple gem. Um, a gem infused titanite said to be an object of infatuations for victim victims of stunted development. Simple weapons inflict magic damage and restore FP very gradually to help even a simpleton muster some metal. Huh, that's an interesting description. Um, 
wonder if you can get invaded in this building, like up on the top here. I would assume not, because down there is like the boss fight, and you could just drop down easily. This is a mimic, I believe. Yep. Ooh, that was a delay. Golden Ritual Spear. Is that a weapon? Yeah. A ritual spear presented to the Dark Moon Knights before Sullivan claimed the title of Pontiff can also be used as a staff. Sorceries cast using this weapon channeled the Wielder's Faith. Steady chant. So it sounds like the Dark Moons were part of this area until Sullivan like assumed his role here. Um, and I don't know if you caught it when I was being invaded, but it said being invaded by the Aldrich Faithful. guys are already coming after me. So there's some PvP down here, or NPC PvP. They come in front of me. Deacon Skirt. Looks like these guys are from Ferosa. Like these dresses. Those are the Drang Spears, right? And these are the... what are these? Drang Twin Spears. But Drang are from... Paired Spears of the Drang Knights proclaimed descendants from the land known as the for the legend of the linking of the fire. When the Drang Knights disbanded, they scattered across lands as cell swords. They quickly became known for shieldless, aggressive tactics that stuck, struck fear into the hearts of men. What? Where was shieldless, shieldless Lothian from? Ferosa. Aha. So Shieldless Lothian, those guys are Drang, Prowlet, and they look like Ferosa Knights. Ferosa is where Elia Moist was. So there's just mounting evidence that we are in Anerlando. Lordran, whatever. I mean, specifically I would say Lord... Uh, and Orlando because you know all the lands are converging and it's not enough that it's you know strictly you know Lordran it's it's the area of it that was associated with the gods similar to their attack in the Sen's Fortress.
It's interesting. It looks like these guys were really abused. They had anchors wedged into their legs. Yeah, see this one is bolted down. It can't move. But anchors wedged into the legs so they could be chained. Um, and the one thing I've heard online is that, like, you know, these guys are, like, feigning death so that they won't. Sad, really. Guess we should uh, pop this. Uh, I think there's one more. Maybe there's only the two. Um, I got the thing up there. There's more of that lady's statue. And we have to... Okay, hold on a second. I've got to pull up my timer here. Now we have to go do the section that I... I, uh... I especially don't like because it's basically three uh, you know those pontiff beasts and I just don't like the uh... or is it only two? one two I think this one has lightning attack too see what I'm doing. What? Jeez. I do get 13,000 from him, but jeez. So I'm gonna just come back. They don't respawn. Oh god, please tell me they don't respawn. And uh, and then I can just fight the one with eleven. Now all the. Deacons are alive and it can shoot me with fire. Alright. This is theoretically very optional, however. There's some good lore around here, so it's uh, it's definitely worth it to 
Human drags, that's big. We've been talking about drags. There it is. You get the ring of favor for beating both of them. Now if I that hadn't killed them, he like lies on his back and he begs. Which is interesting. And another deep gem. So the deacons, the deep are here, Aldrich. Um but human dregs. Proof of a duty fulfilled by the Aldrich faithful, who patiently await the devourer of gods' return. Dregs are the heaviest thing within the human body and will sink to the lowest depths imaginable, where they become the shackles that bind us bind this world. Kind of sounds like dregs and the deep are very much linked together. Um, a ring symbolizing the favor of the goddess Fina, whose fateful beauty is mentioned in a legend. True to the fickle nature of Fina's favor, her ring increases max HP, stamina, and maximum quick load, and I don't think it breaks. So I'll probably just throw it on. Okay, now we have a convenient bonfire here. And we obviously have this kind of deacon in the corner here, that's important. Pray to Archdeacon McDonnell. So here. It's really interesting because Aldrich Faithful. So we know about Archdeacon Flimt, Archdeacon Royce, and Archdeacon McDonald. And we knew that the third one had went to follow Aldrich. The holy symbol of the Cathedral of the Deep and crest of those who see beyond fire to the age of deep waters. Equipped to pledge oneself to Aldrich Faithful Covenant, the faithful ensure that Aldrich, devourer of gods, remain undisturbed by taking the form of loyal spirits and hunting down those who would trespass the ruined cathedral. So yeah. Ugh. I really want to just jump offline. Um, so he obviously started following the advice of Aldrich and started bloating himself up like a pig as well. Um, he is much bigger than the other archdeacon who is at the Cathedral of the Deep. I think Flimp turned into one of those maggots, so we don't really know his size, but he certainly is a lot bigger than the other, like, deacons that we see in general. Um, presumably he started out as the same size, so... So now we have something very similar to Anna Orlando.
Whoa. That was a solid hit. I don't remember this part being terribly difficult. However, I also don't, like, in a typical playthrough of this, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily try to clear all these guys out, so... Um... Let me just try running through here rather than trying to take each one out. Because I do have 90,000 souls. And it would be nice if I could, you know... Get the items and just proceed through. Or at least get to a better place to fight someone. Oh, it's such a terribly long ladder. Can you be invaded by Eldritch Faithful if you're not if you're not cindered? I wonder. So we'll grab the Easterner's ashes. That sounds like potentially Sir Alon, but I guess we'll see. Umbral ash of an armor merchant from an eastern land. Surely the fire ha handmaid of the Firelink Shrine. Blah, blah, blah. The merchant, the captain of the clan of hunters, was fascinated with weaponry. So maybe um, Shir Shiva? Clan of Hunters, yeah. Okay. Oh, that queue is so long. Oh my gosh. I wonder if they drop their stuff. Like the Silver Knight armor and stuff. He does that really slow attack whenever I need to regain. So I wonder if I can get this guy to come and follow me up here. Good to Ember. I'm going to open up the final shortcut, which I don't need. And then I'm going to do Henri's storyline, and then we'll call it a day. Oh, I tried to dodge there. Oh, thought I 
was just out of range of that. Okay, I think we're good. Silver Knight Helm, they do drop their stuff. Helm of the Silver Knights, allegiant to the royals of old. It is said that even after the family's passing, the knights continued to watch over their manor in the ruined cathedral. there's any items over here there might I think there might be one okay well there's this one there might be one in this building over here but it's definitely going to be the quickest uh, shortcut we have nope no items but might as well open it all right perfect and just in time for Um, to do the rest of Henri's story. Oh, and there's some items here. This is the Dragon Slayer bow. Great bow used by the Dragon Slayers during the Age of Gods, far greater in size than any normal bow. The bow must be anchored to the ground when fired, a time-consuming operation that leaves the user vulnerable. Only specialized great arrows can be used. These large arrows were said to have been used by dragon hunters during the Age of Gods. Easily pierces human flesh. Oh yeah, you have to go all the way around. Okay, fine. Nothing there. Okay. All right. Hopefully I can get out of here quick enough to not be invaded again. So I'll heal up here. And I realize now that I guess I just did kill everything. There's that, we saw this down in the Aldrich Faithful Room, really tall versions of these statues. Um, is there something I didn't read? No, I read the Easterner's Ashes. And here we are in the Dark Moon tomb. There's Lord Gwyn, just as he was when we found this in Dark Souls 1. Except there's a uh, new door. Well, when we put on the Dark Moon Seance Ring, it Revealed that this was an illusion. But now it's just a normal illusory wall. Here's where we prayed to Gwendolyn. Did I do something wrong? Here's the brass set. Armor of a knight once known as the Dark Moon. It is said that this brass armor hides something hideous within. Something about its silhouette suggests femininity. Well, the Lady of the Dark Moon was a woman. And then this is the hallway, and then this is Gwim's tomb. However, I'm not sure why I might have to do something else. For some reason, there is this ring called the Reversal Ring. 
which can switch your gender move set. The divine ring granted to the dark moon Gwendolyn in his youth causes males to perform female actions and vice versa. Gwendolyn was raised like a daughter through the aura of the moon and was said to behave like a sullen brooding goddess. And there's still flowers placed on the tomb. Um, okay, well, I'm going to reload real quick, if that's the issue. Um, otherwise, I might not have done a step, and we might have to go back. In that case, I will probably end the episode here and start with that, um, so I can read up on it and make sure I didn't miss any steps. Because there's supposed to be a Pilgrim of Londor here. Around the, by this door. Okay. Well, um, we will uh, pick up here uh, in the next episode and see what's uh, beyond the Dark Moon Tomb and hopefully do our thing with honor. All right. Uh, catch you next time. Bye.